Hey everyone, my name is James and welcome back to Chippy's Couch. So today, we're back for another round of the Modded Mage series. And it's kind of hard to believe, it's already been five days. The days are completely flying by. But what I'm really striving towards is that two-week mark. Because then, we can officially be the number one show during the quarantine, right? That's what I'm going for. That's the big award with this one. Number one in the quarantine. So I hope you're all being safe and washing your hands, especially before you hit my thumbs up button. My god. But yeah, welcome back. So yesterday's episode was, I've got to say it, a bit of a breeze. You know, I really like the beginning of Terraria because it's pretty simple. It's got a nice flow to it. And I really feel like today's episode is going to be the exact same. Nice flow, some upgrades, some bosses. Kind of the perfect Terraria episode, really. We haven't even filmed it, but I'm going to say it's pretty perfect. I'm that confident. So I came onto the world today. I had a little bit of free time this morning. So I decided I'm just going to do it. I'm going to build a bunch of NPC rooms. Because we need so many NPCs. When you mash two mods together, they're like, need NPCs? We, we got a million of them. So I added ten rooms. So we've got a collection here of some various ones that we'll use at various points. You guys know the drill. The cool thing is, the Dryad now sells jungle roses, which I thought was pretty interesting. I've been saying for a while, oh, I really want a jungle rose because it would really spice up the vanity a little bit. And now we've got it. We also got the Die Trader. And I wanted to speak to him to see if we can spice up the vanity a little bit as well. Because right now, I'm using the uh, the glorious white robe, but I've been wearing it for a couple of days. You know, you got to spice it up. It's looking... Looking a little bit plain. So what did we get? We got glowing mushroom dye. That's kind of wizardy. Goes with a fungal clump, I gotta say. Maybe it goes better on the uh, the helmet. A golden flower? Ooh, what about a golden robe? I kind of like it. A lot of people think gold looks, um, looks tacky. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't know if I like gold jewelry, but gold in real life is... It's alright. It's not too bad. I'm one of these people that like golden guns. You know, some people are like, ugh, tacky, get away from me. I think I'm going to go with um, with silver. Is that a little boring, going from white to silver? Probably so, but i tell you what I'll do. I'll sell the rest, and I'll cash in big time. Five gold, thank you very much. So the very first thing we're going to do today is quickly make some buffs. So I'm going to make mana regen. I'll probably make regen just in general as well. Let me see if I got this set up. So potion... Ah, look at you. Got loads of potions. So I'll make a regen. Do I make an iron skin? Yeah, go on. I'll make an iron skin as well. And then we'll make that mana regen. Because the very first boss fight we're going to do is the Eater of Worlds. This is what I mean about it being a pretty seamless episode. You're never going to have a problem with the Eater of Worlds. Let's be real. Even in expert mode, it is the biggest pushover that I think we've all seen in Terraria. But that's why I love it. It's a very satisfying boss to kill if Terraria ASMR was a thing. I think killing the Eater of Worlds would be number one, for sure. So to get this going, all we're going to do is blow up some Shadow Orbs. I don't really feel like we need to make an arena. I feel like with my budget Water Bolt and my pretty decent armor, I think we're going to have a, a pretty good time. Let's take a little look at this though. What did we get? We got the Dark Heart. Now I'm fairly certain... That is a Thorium item, but we'll have a little look. Yeah, it's from the healer class. It gives your ally life a little bit of extra, you know, good stuff. All right, it's an accessory. I don't really need to know too much about it because we're not playing a uh, healer right now. So I have been memeing about it for a couple of days. It's obviously a very serious topic, but I'm genuinely curious. How many of you are actually pulled out of school, pulled out of work, pulled out of college? Do let me know because... I want to know, because I feel like it's a lot. I feel like a lot of you are at home right now, and the concept is, is kind of mental. As I was saying yesterday, Courtney is home for um, for a month, it might look like, which is which is bonkers. My sister today, she's, um, she's pulling out tomorrow as well. So, yeah, it's mad. All right, Ear of Worlds. Okay. And let me know what you're doing with your free time, because I'm genuinely curious about that. Obviously, Court's home, but she still has to work, you know? There's still stuff to be done. Whereas with me, I'm always home. So I don't really, ha I don't really have to worry about any of this. 
<laughs> it doesn't affect me in that sense. Alright, so the scuffed water bowl is not exactly doing the damage I wanted. And I should have taken this at the start, but I didn't take my iron skin, my regen, or my mana regen. Which is not a good idea. You should always be taking all of that kind of stuff. The thing is, is we're not necessarily splitting the boss. But as you can see from the, um, from the health bar, we're doing loads of damage to loads of little components. So I think what's going to happen is once it starts to split, this boss is going to be uh, a bit of a breeze. Once it starts dishing out all of the uh, additional health and stuff, I think it's going to be all right. But then again, you never know with Eater of Worlds. Because sometimes you get cocky and then it decides, oh, you know what? We're going to have loads of little bits and these little bits are going to absolutely tank you. But I said at the start, you never have to worry about the Eater of Worlds really. So I've kind of just got to just got to relax and got to rely on the fact that the Eater of Worlds is a book is a big pushover. I almost call him a book, a book pushover. I don't know about that one. Is he a book? Well, he is a worm. Is a worm technically a bug? I don't know. Because you would find bugs underground. And that's where you find worms. And you know what? Those two little goofy people from The Lion King, they eat bugs. And I've seen them eat a worm. Well, I don't know what's going on today. <laughs> if this is the kind of chatter for today's episode, I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> okay, well, let me grab all this. It's done. All right. Now we know. All right, it's fine. To Timon and Pumba from The Lion King, I'm sorry for calling you little goofs, all right? No harm done. All right, what did we get? We actually got quite a lot. I'm seeing a lot of new things in my inventory. For one, we got this statue, which looks amazing. It looks more like a snake than a worm, but yeah, all right. Okay, so we got a treasure bag. We also got the law. We're going to read the law because I'm curious to see what effect it has. So first one, the corruption. The rotten and forever deteriorating landscape of infected life brought upon by a deadly microbe long ago. It is rumoured that the microbe was created through experimentation by a long dead race. Cool. The Ear of Worlds. Perhaps it was just a giant worm infected by the microbe given centuries to feed and grow its festering body. Seems likely, given the origin of this place, deadly microbes spawn around you while this is placed in your inventory. However, you will have decreased life regen due to your skin rotting off. Well, all right. I think that's a, a fair compromise. A lot of these are um, a kind of fair, kind of not. So what do we get? We got the worm scarf, which is uh, a classic. We also got the eater of pain, which is a, uh, a healer's weapon. We also got some more stuff for the bard class. And that is pretty much it. I think what we're going to do then is dump all of that off because it's not necessarily needed right now. So, see you later. And then, I guess what we'll do is we'll make the um, the upgrade. i tell you what, just real quick, that really shows how much I've changed over the past year. I would use the Worm Scarf all the way until the Moon Lord. And that's mental to think about now. Now I don't even care to use it. I just kind of leave it in the, uh, in the storage system. That's mad. So, yeah, let's make a... Um, a bunch of uh, bars first and then we'll make the nightmare pickaxe so let me make some demonite because what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to hell now and the reason i want to go to hell is to mine hellstone because i saw that there's an upgrade with um with some hellstone to make a mana weapon i can't remember exactly what it was because i was researching it the other day so we're just going to go out on a limb and say it just needs a few hellstone bars so we'll take that um i don't think i have anything do i have any let me just check real quick. Do I have any herbs that are um, fire blossoms? That's it. I was looking for the word. Wow, 19 fire blossoms. That's pretty decent. If you're wondering why I have 19 fire blossoms and I haven't been to hell, have a second. What do you think it is? It's nature bags. They're so good. Honestly, that's one thing I do now. I always look out for them because in reality, collecting herbs is a bit of a pain. You know, Fire Blossom, for example, it's nice to have it now because then you don't have to worry about it. So let me mine all of this. Oh, wait, I'm using the wrong pickaxe. Ooh, ooh, that was not a good idea. For some reason, I just assumed that it would just um, mine the top layer and not that part. But I'm fairly certain. Ah, all right, okay. So here's the thing. This is like a big pool of lava, obviously. But um, before, it, this whole area was flooded 
but I actually drained it, which is why I was kind of um, kind of shocked coming down here. Oh God, stop. Okay, I want to make a, a clear path so that the the lava can't drain out, so that I can fill it with water. There you go. All right. God, I have completely butchered this. <laughs> I really have. Like, I've wasted so much lava, potential lava as well, that we could have used for uh, for good stuff. So, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to blow this up. And I think this will probably be enough water to, to drain out. So, let me do this again. Let me blow it all up. There you go. Go on. Drain on down. And then we'll, uh, we'll reap the rewards. Do you think that's going to be enough water? If I do this quickly, it might be. Ah, there you go. All right. Cool. Pretty sick. Oh, there's only a little bit left. All right. That's not too bad. So I've made it into hell and I thought instead of starting off by doing a little bit of mining, I thought I would take the time, find a hell forge. I've done that many a time where I've come here, done a bunch of mining and gone, ah, didn't grab that. Luckily, there's one right here just next to the, uh, just next to the point where I dropped in. So now I'm just going to do just a good chunk of mining, really. The good thing about this is that no matter what you do in any kind of mod, usually you need hellstone. Like, even later in the mod, it might be like, oh, you want to make this amazing ore? Well, all you've got to do is combine all of these stuff together. And ah, uh, yeah, I just remembered that... <laughs> I always forget about that, but Calamity changes the way... Um, Obsidian skin potions work, so you can't necessarily dive down. It's more like having a lava charm But that being said, I still don't think we're gonna have any issues. It's like a very minor setback. It's almost a um, I don't know kind of a pointless change really. I don't know what it um, really discourages All right, I wasn't really paying attention to my obsidian skin potion, but that being said we're now done with that chapter of uh Mining Hellstone, and it's a brand new day, so we'll probably end up doing the uh, the Jellyfish boss. But before we do that, let's slap all that we gained inside of the storage unit. I also got another suspicious looking eye, so I think I'll probably do that, I don't know, maybe off camera, do a little bit of grinding for a little bit more money, we'll have to see. Alright, so Hellstone bars. And I can't make it because I didn't put the Hellforge in, that's right. Okay, rookie mistake. So let me take that out. And then I'll put this new one in. Hellstone. Okay. So how much can we craft? Oh my god. An abundance. An absolute abundance. Alright, so let's have a little look. Okay. So what was this weapon called? I genuinely don't remember, but I'm pretty sure we'll find it. So, this is one, the Inferno Staff, sends out a Molten Flare that will plume in a vertical surge of fire. I'm fairly certain that's what it was. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm fairly certain that's what it was. Alright, so, it's called the Inferno Staff. So, let me craft up one of those. Inferno Staff. Thank you very much. Okay, what did we get? We got Taboo, which is actually alright. It's not too bad. So, let me send this out. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. That's good if you're in a uh, in a group situation. Say, for example, you're doing a goblin army and they're just continuously coming this way. You go like that, you stick up a few firewalls, and then they've all got to walk through it. That's clever. I like that. That's pretty. Uh, it's pretty great. Yeah, that's a that's a good item. Okay, so I'm gonna head all the way over here, and we're gonna do this because I'm fairly certain to make this boss happen. What I need to get is sea scales and coral. So we're off to the oceans to go and grab both of those. And then what's after that? Because I feel like this is going to be a pretty chill fight. Actually, I might scratch that a little bit. Because I'm fairly certain I've died to the Queen Jellyfish more times than I want to admit. It's actually not that easy, come to think of it. It has that attack where it kind of flings you up. I guess if we have a lucky horseshoe, we'll be alright. And a piercing weapon, because I'm fairly certain... That's why I've died to it a lot in the past. And then it's the hive mind. Oh, I love the hive mind. The hive mind makes me so nostalgic for um for the origin of Chippy's Couch from Series 1. Because the very first Terraria thumbnail we had on this channel had the hive mind. So I found what we're looking for. We're looking for C scales. I looked at this and thought, this is what we wanted. But nah. 
Oh God, <laughs> the uh, the fungal clump classes as a summon weapon. Don't worry, don't worry. It's technically an accessory, all right? Not breaking any rules, but anyway, we need some ocean bars. So to make the resonator, you need, oh, it's not even coral that you need. It's starfish and seashells. All right, well, I have both. So you need four bars, so you only need four of these. Oh wait, yeah, all right, it's the coral. Oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> I tell you what, I play so many mods and I look at so many recipes, I get stumped. Okay, so I'm going to basically build this out and then we'll make some buffs and we'll come back and we'll do the uh, the jellyfish boss fight. I don't exactly know how it's going to go because I don't have any kind of um, additional jump height. Like usually I'll have like a red balloon or maybe a second cloud in a bottle, like a blizzard in a bottle. Don't have any of that today, but um, but hopefully we'll be fine. I think we will. I think we'll be all right. So before we head to do the boss fight, I've just gone ahead and made the boss summon, which was a little bit of a pain because I had to run to the corruption. Bit of a shame about that one. But I remembered at the start of the episode, I actually planted down some pumpkin seeds. And the reason I did this is because there's a weapon called, I think it's called the Harvester. And I did want to check it out. So I think if I've got a little bit of time, I'll check it out real quick now. Because if it's amazing, we can bring it to the fight. So let's have a little look here. So yeah, this is it. It's called the Harvest Staff. So all it needs is five Fallen Stars and some Pumpkins. And I'm fairly certain we've got both of those. Now, I'm pretty sure it might be underpowered. But that said, you do need the Pumpkins to get it. So it might be one of these things where I keep doing this. It might be one of these things where um, you're meant to just get it during the Halloween season when they grow naturally. But we'll see. Harvest. Come on, mouse. Harvest staff. Bam. There we go. Okay, so let's have a little read about it. 17 magic damage and it casts flaming pumpkins. All right. Okay. It's kind of cool. I like it. Um, it reminds me of um, like a grenade launcher. Do you know what I mean? Like it looks like these are about to uh, to explode, but obviously not. I like that they linger around for a little bit as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's from the Calamity mod, so at least we've got something new. It looks great. Like, the sprite looks amazing, which I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased about. I don't know if I'd use it. I feel like it might need a bit of a bump in specs. If I'm being honest, I feel like this could be um, a little bit higher damage, considering that this is 21 and this is 17. I don't know. Maybe I'm judging it too harshly. Maybe I am, actually. I think it might be um, specs enough. I mean, compared to this that does 10 that we spent a bunch of time on. It's all right. Yeah, it's not bad. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I keep flip-flopping. It's not even like a, a controversial um, weapon. It's just hard to decide whether it's good or not. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I need to test it out on the Goblin Invasion. So I was going to do... The hive mine today, but I think today's episode is actually going to be uh, quite long. So I'll skip on that for today. And then what we'll do is tomorrow we'll do the goblin army and we'll do hive mind as well. So I think I've left this a little late. You know what? I thought, yeah, I've got plenty of time. I can make a harvester. Apparently not. So we'll see. I'll give it a go. If it doesn't work out, we'll uh, we'll just do it again. Why not? But we do need to uh, to get cracking with it, basically. Oh, look at this. This makes me nostalgic as well. Like, I feel like this is a uh, a classic Thorium boss, let me tell you. So what do you guys think about the um, the pumpkin thing? I think it's all right. It's not too bad. I think the Wave Bolt is definitely uh, better. It's not even called the Wave Bolt, never mind. It's called the Way Washer. You guys know what I'm referring to, though. Yeah, this will be fine. I think we can uh, crank this out before nighttime for sure. This is actually all right. I feel like the fungal clump is really doing the majority of the damage, though. Let's be real. The thing that I always think about whenever I do this fight is the uh, the noise that it makes. It has that uh, sound effect that it's robbed from the um, the minecart bumpers. And I think of it every time I do it. It's the little, like, boing noise. That's what it reminds me of. Oh, God. Well, good thing is we have that lucky horseshoe, so none of that really matters. Life is quite low, though. Oh, God, get out of that. Oh, snap. Wow. First death of the episode. I tell you what, if I'd have done that properly, 
we wouldn't have died then. Look at what it dropped. It dropped a bunch of um of junk, basically. Are you alright. No, you're you're are you coming back? What's happening here? What's the Wii you, Queen Jellyfish? The Queen Jellyfish is no longer after you. Well alright. Okay, well let me wait until we get a new day and then we'll uh we'll do it again. Alright, we're back for round two. Brand new, bright, shiny day. So we're gonna crank this out. And it should be a pretty good time, because I'm not going to rush it this time. And also, we now have a goblin army back at spawn. So, today's episode is... Drumroll, please. Extended. That's right, it's going to be a longer episode. Hell yeah, boys. More time spent with you. More time spent with me. My god. I actually really like these extended episodes. I'm always cautious to do them, because the data kind of says... It's, I don't know, it's it's not always a good idea to do a longer episode, but I tell you what, you guys, you're pretty committed, right? Once you're this far in, will you go an extra few minutes? Hell yeah. All right, cool. Okay, so yeah, this fight will really be easy, but yeah, we'll crank out the goblin army today, and then we can spend tomorrow searching for the goblin tinkerer. And that's actually good, because if I have the goblin tinkerer, I'm going to be able to make some better accessories before we do the hive mind. I think maybe tomorrow what we'll do then is we might find our Crimson Island and try and have a go at uh, the Perforators. I'm always unsure about doing this in the series. The Perforators, by the way, if you've never played Calamity, is the uh, the Crimson alternative to the Hive Mind. So Calamity actually gives you the option to do both by adding a little artificial island to your world. So yeah, the reason I don't always want to do it is because... It's a bit of a faff, because sometimes it doesn't like to spawn. Sometimes it just doesn't spawn at all. So, um, so we'll see. Someone just fell out of that aquatic abomination. The ocean depths bubble beneath blah blah blah. Okay, cool. Alright. Well, I think for now, we will head back to the surface. And then, yeah, I guess we get to test if this is actually uh, banging or not. Kind of is banging. It's hard to believe. I've already done 11%, and all I was doing was uh, clearing out some of the little goblins on the way. My god, usually this event lasts forever. Yeah, that, that really works very well. Yeah, I kind of nailed that one. This one, um, this one is definitely good. If you want to do crowd control, add a big flaming wall. Terraria AI is dumb, right? They're never going to go, you know what, do I walk around the big flaming wall? Nah, it's kind of like me when I'm practicing Yaren, and there's two big flaming tornadoes either side. And for many, many attempts, I just simply ran into them, because I was a small brain as well, alright? But these goblins are, are definitely small brains. Oh, this is good. This is actually going really quickly, which is, um, which is nice. So, I've been thinking about a new game to play, now that i finished The Legend of Zelda, Link Between Worlds. Not to Let's Play or anything. Uh, I'm really enjoying having these little games that I play just kind of on my own and I chat to you guys about. So I decided I was going to boot up a game that I got for my birthday for the Switch called Diablo Free. Diablo Free. I'm sure many of you have played a Diablo game because it's one of the most popular game franchises out there. But I've actually never played one. And, uh, and Courtney got me one for my birthday. She got me the third one, which is the only one on the Switch. And, uh, and I'm really enjoying it. It took me a while to play because I remember seeing this image from Terraria Help, Edward, over on Twitter. And he was showing off his most played Switch games. And I remember seeing it and it had something silly like 400 hours in Diablo 3. And I thought, I don't know if I'm ready for that kind of commitment. You know, sometimes you've got to mentally prepare yourself for something that can be life-changing, overwhelming. But uh, I played maybe like two hours of it this morning. Really good. I really enjoyed it. It's pretty bad, but um, I kind of thought of it like a mobile game almost. Do you know it's got that style to it? I think mobile games probably ripped it off, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily an insult. But it definitely feels like one of those games where it's nice and casual. That might change. You guys might know a little bit more than me, and, uh, and it might not be that way. But wasn't it that thing where they announced the mobile game and, uh, and everyone booed at BlizzCon? And they were like, do you guys not have phones? That's the vibe I got. Well, there you go. That's the Goblin Army defeated. Did we get anything new? Well, no. Oh, we did get the treasure bag. 
The Sea Breeze Pendant. Wearers of this pendant shall not fear the depths. Increases your breath by 25% and grants the ability to swim. Increases your damage by 10% when you're wet. So I think what we'll do is we'll use this tomorrow in the uh, the Thorium Sea Biome. And we'll go and check it out. Because I think if you're getting this, it probably wants you to go there. Well, anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. It's kind of mind-blowing, but if we continue at this rate, we'll be at 250,000 subscribers in a couple days, which is mental. I can't believe this little channel is blossoming into something a lot bigger. It's nice. Right, anyway, have a great day, everyone. Stay safe. Wash your hands. If you are new around here, maybe consider clicking the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.